In this AWR TV video, we're going to look at iNets for PCB. Now, this video is in direct response to an introduction to iNets video that we put up previously on AWR TV, and um, we just got an overwhelming response about uh, iNets in general, asking us to talk about how it applies to PCB. So here you go. Here's the example. Uh, what I'm showing here is a layout that was done with iNets that uh, has all the components taken away. And if we just zoom in on it real quickly, you can see that there's a whole bunch of routes in here. It's rather complex. Um, but there's also different sorts of vias. We have uh, buried blind and through vias intermixed on various layers of metal. There's um, 16 layers here um, that comprises our PCB. So you can do very complex things inside an RF design tool when you have a feature like iNets. So let's look at how this feature actually plays out for PCB. And we're going to look at a couple um, very simple routes. One is a multi-point route that I have set up here. And then the other is a point-to-point -point route route that uh, we'll look at over here. In the layout, um, it looks just like any other layout. We have our big device, um, and you can see the multi-point route here. Um, to start the iNets, uh, I'm first going to look at some default horizontal and vertical routing widths for my traces, and uh, this toolbar item over here allows me to set those things. As you can see, I have a rather wide vertical of 8 millimeters and a somewhat narrower uh, horizontal of 1 millimeter. So let's go ahead and click on the route. Double clicking on it brings up the routing tool, and you can see that it does look substantially different from a typical mouse pointer in the AWR design environment. And if I just click and start routing by dragging the mouse, actually, I'm not dragging the mouse, I'm just moving the mouse itself after clicking, um, I can come down to this point here, and you can see there's a little stickiness to it when I get on a vertical or horizontal with regard to one of my routes, or one of my rats um, associated with that net. So I get a little stickiness right there, so I can go over to the uh, cap on the left there. We'll click once, or actually we'll double click and close that off. I can click once um, on, or double click on the uh, rat there and route um, a thinner horizontal line over to our capacitor. Now to finish off that net, I can double click on our uh, on our route over here and click down here and start routing as I would and finish off. Now you'll notice that um, I got a rather rather wide vertical route, and I may have wanted something narrower. So to go change that without having to go back to that dialog box, I can click on the shape properties, go into the segments here, and I can just put in whatever value I want for a line, and up it comes. Um, if we zoom in on this area, it appears that there's actually a break in the metal, but this is just a visual key to your eye to know that those are three separate lines on the same net that were routed and they get treated as such. And I can zoom in arbitrarily close to that, and you can see that the separation still pretty much stays the same. Be assured that when you tape out, um, all that metal will be merged together um, quite correctly. Uh, let's go look at what happens when we want to insert um, a multi-layer route or routes with vias. This is one of the uh, really powerful things that iNets can do, is the automatic via insertion. So let's just double click on this line and start routing. Again, sort of arbitrarily, we'll come out on metal one, I'll click once, and I'm going to hold the shift and um, control key, and I'm going to run my mouse wheel um, up or down. You can see that the layer name is changing. It's physically moving from one layer to the other. And let's start off by just going to layer 2 here, and we'll come back and shift down to layer 9 or 11, and then we'll come and go all the way to the bottom. Here we go, bottom, and then we'll come back over this way up to layer 6. Uh, come back up to layer 1. All up to layer 1. Here we go. Come back over here to layer, to the special layer 1.5, and we'll show you something special with that here in a minute. And if I unclick and now zoom in on this area, you can see that the vias have been automatically inserted for us. And in fact, if we go to the 3D view, it's going to be a little bit easier to see that. Okay, I have my thick vertical metal still, which we can go back and fix, either by changing the dialog box or going in and setting the individual segment properties. But now what I want to show you is what happens if I don't want to use that default through via. So we'll go over here to where we went from uh, metal 1 to metal 2, or layer 1 to layer 2, and we'll Instead of looking at the segment widths, actually let's go change a couple of them while we're there. Three, two, and four, just to make it interesting. We'll go in and look at the vias, and you can see that the default uh, 
via is the through via, but on the uh, transition from 1 to 2 we can use a blind via. So let's go ahead and insert that and see what it looks like in our 3D view. And you can see there is our blind via inserted automatically for us. And our metal layers have changed. The widths are changed there. Uh, the final thing I want to show you before we close out this segment is how easy it is to um, finish off routes. You can just click on the route and hit snap to fit and it goes and finishes for us. But then the other thing is uh, the aspect of positive and negative metal is a very powerful one and we are able to use that in the AWR design environment as well. I'm going to put down a ground flood around that special bit of metal that we had over there and you can see that um, because we had that special metal layer there's actually negative metal poured all around it and it subtracts away from the ground flood so that when we would put metal one on the surface we would have uh, an appropriate spacing as determined by that special line type that we had in the um, in the metallization that we selected for that last bit of route this special layer here copper one 0.5 millimeters actually refers to something we call a line type that allows us to add in subtracted metal so we can do ground floods very easily. We can switch that to a one millimeter separation and now you can see that it's gotten bigger. So this is some of the power of INETS, a very powerful capability to do multi-point routing or point-to-point -point routing. We have automatic via insertion from a selection of vias that are appropriately defined for that technology. And when you combine that with the ability of the line types to do positive and negative metal for ground floods, you just have a very powerful routing capability that you really don't find in an RFPCB tool. But there it is um, inside AWR's design environment with all the connections to circuit simulation and EM analysis and the ACE circuit extractor. If you'd like more information about INETs or about ACE or Axiom or about positive and negative metal and how this can help you in your RFPCB design flow, you can go to the AWR website, look at other AWR TV videos, or contact your AWR sales professional.